With its supercomputers, jets, and chips, the US has been fighting hard to stay ahead of the world in technological advancement. But one country in the East is catching up, and even exceeding the US in some aspects, and that's China. In this video, we'll dive deep into the technological race between China and the US and see which of these countries is truly ahead. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more videos like this. When it comes to electric car manufacturing, the two largest markets globally are the United States and China. But which nation is leading this race? China's BYD, or Build Your Dreams, is the world's largest manufacturer by volume, a company that branched out into automobile production after being established in 1995 as a battery manufacturer. Producing its own batteries in-house allows BYD to save costs and ensure quality, giving it a major advantage in battery technology. So, when all of the competitors were plagued with shortages, BYD was comfortably operating like nothing had ever happened. On the other hand, in terms of market capitalization, Tesla is the most valuable automaker in the world. It started in 2003 as an industry trailblazer for high-end electric vehicles, and by 2023, the company had become the standard for what EVs should be. Because it's always improving and adding new features to its vehicles, Tesla has a significant software and innovation edge. Customers who prioritize performance and flair are drawn to Tesla, which has a dedicated fan following and is recognized globally. With the anticipated rise in worldwide demand for EVs in the future, both firms have enormous prospects for growth and expansion. The manufacturing of EVs isn't the only place where China's giving Tesla a hard time. It's also giving Elon Musk a run for his money in EV technology as well. Tesla has a network of over 25,000 superchargers around the world, where drivers can plug in their vehicles and recharge their batteries in about an hour. But Chinese company NIO destroyed that wait time with their technology. It offers a unique service called Battery as a Service, which allows drivers to swap their depleted batteries with fully charged ones at automated stations in just a few minutes. This eliminates the need to wait for the battery to recharge, and reduces the maintenance and degradation costs of owning a battery. NIO's battery swapping is much faster than Tesla's supercharging, taking only 2.5 minutes on average, compared to 57.5 minutes. This means that NIO drivers can save a lot of time and hassle on long trips. Plus, it's more convenient than Tesla's supercharging, as it's done automatically and doesn't require the driver to get out of the car or handle any cables. Tesla's supercharging, on the other hand, requires the driver to manually plug in the vehicle and monitor the charging process. Both technologies are innovative, but NIO's battery swapping has an edge over Tesla's supercharging in terms of speed, cost, and convenience. Comac is China's biggest aircraft manufacturer and has been in operation since 2008 to create and manufacture civil aircraft for both local and international markets. The C919 is their most popular model. It is a narrow-body jet with 174 seats and a maximum range of 5,555 kilometers, and is an attempt to unseat the all-time best-selling aircraft, the Boeing 737. However, Boeing has been at the head of the pack in the aircraft sector for decades since its founding in 1916. With a backlog of over 4,000 orders, the 737 series of planes has already delivered over 10,000 units. The most recent model, the 737 MAX, has a maximum range of 6,570 kilometers and can transport 230 people. So, does the Comac really stand a chance here? In terms of technology, construction, and avionics, both aircrafts are similar, but the engines, landing gear, and flight control system of the C919 are mostly supplied by foreign companies. In contrast, the Boeing features more indigenously developed hardware and software, including winglets, the flight deck, and the aircraft itself. Plus, the 737 MAX offers more passenger capacity while being cheaper, which means it outperforms the C919 in terms of range and fuel economy. But, after the two deadly crashes that it faced, that plane was grounded in 2019. This helped the C919 come forward as an alternative, but it'll still take some time before China dethrones Boeing. NVIDIA was founded in 1993, and today it's the global leader in the GPU industry. Many have tried to dethrone this giant, but quickly learned why NVIDIA is sitting where it is. But since its 2018 inception, Chinese company Byren has been vying with NVIDIA for dominance of the GPU industry. 
One of NVIDIA's most notable offerings is the A100, a GPU with 312 teraflops of peak performance, ideal for AI tasks. Featuring a 7nm process, 40GB of HBM2 memory, and a PCIe 4.0 interface, the A100 is built on the Ampere architecture. On the other hand, Byron's BR100, which is capable of peak performance for artificial intelligence applications of up to 1,000 teraflops, is its most prominent offering. The Byron architecture, upon which the BR100 is built, makes use of a 7nm 2.5D CoOS package, 64GB of HBM2E memory, and a PCIe 5.0 CXL interface. Both GPUs are great at what they do, but having more transistors, greater memory, and a quicker interface than the A100 might give the BR100 a performance advantage. One aspect where NVIDIA really shines is the community and market share. It's easier to find drivers and patches for NVIDIA's GPUs thanks to their global popularity. The BR100, in contrast, is primarily targeted at the Chinese market. In 2022, the Frontier surpassed the Exaflop threshold and was named the world's fastest supercomputer. It's a collaboration between Cray and Oak Ridge National Laboratory and is capable of up to two quadrillion exaflops, the maximum number of computations that a computer can execute in one second. Pharmaceutical, environmental, and nuclear sciences are only a few examples of the high-power scientific domains that make use of Frontier. On the other hand, using homegrown CPUs, the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the National University of Defense Technology created the Tian-3 supercomputer. It doubled the speed of the USA's supercomputer, it's anticipated to outperform Frontier. Tian-3 has several national applications in fields including aerospace engineering, AI, and defense. Frontier and Tian-3 are technologically sophisticated, which allows them to be very efficient and operate very well. In contrast to Frontier, which imports its essential components, Tian3 is more autonomous and innovative, since it employs native processors. They both serve many different functions. The Frontier is more widely used in the scientific and social realms, while the Tian3 is busy with its duties in cyber defense and military defense. So, when comparing speed and technology, Tian3 is ahead of Frontier, but when it comes to transparency and teamwork, Frontier is ahead of Tian3. Space tourism is booming, and a number of governmental and corporate entities are getting interested in it. Two of the main rivals are CAS Space, a division of China's state-owned aerospace company, and Blue Origin, founded by Amazon's Jeff Bezos. Suborbital flights that take passengers to the very edge of space and give them a brief feeling of weightlessness are something both firms are working on. On the other hand, their rocket designs, fuel options, and price approaches varied significantly. Though more eco-friendly, the new Shepard rocket from Blue Origin employs a single engine that operates on liquid oxygen and hydrogen, which is costly and difficult to store. Parachutes allow the rocket's six-passenger capsule to land after disengaging from the booster. The ride costs around $2,500, and the business has conducted many test flights with pilots. Although less expensive, the five engines powering the ZK-1A rocket from CAS Space runs on kerosene and liquid oxygen, leading to increased pollution. A capsule that detaches from the booster and uses parachutes to land may transport six people on the rocket. The company hopes to launch its first travelers by 2024, with tickets likely to cost approximately 100,000 US dollars. The competition boils down to this. Which company can offer a reusable rocket and a better experience at a cheaper cost? From where things stand currently, both companies will take some time to achieve their goals. Two tech behemoths, Meta and Baidu, are battling in a race to build a virtual environment where users interact with 3D avatars. Meta, previously Facebook, has changed its name to reflect its new mission of creating the Metaverse, the Internet of Tomorrow. Over the next 12 months, Meta intends to pour $10 billion into the research and development of immersive technologies, including VR, AR, and AI. An online community where users may meet, mingle, do business, and play in the Metaverse is what Meta aspires to build. The top Chinese search engine and artificial intelligence corporation, Baidu, has recently released its own Metaverse app, Zhirang, which translates to Land of Hope in English. 
Jirang is a free and open source platform that aspires to offer creators of metaverse tools and assistance. Baidu plans to utilize the virtual world for a variety of reasons, including gaming, education, advertising, and conferences. And it asserts that Jirang can accommodate up to 100,000 online guests in the same virtual environment. The virtual world, according to Baidu CEO Robin Lee, will bring in a golden age of AI that will revolutionize society. Both of these companies are determined to one-up each other, but until the virtual worlds are properly released, we can't give the crown to either. China and the US are both fighting hard to win this race, but who do you think will win the technological advancement battle? Let us know in the comments below.